You know, recently we, we asked a question on social media and it was, what do you put in your pack, you know, in, in your vest, in whatever for turkey season? We got a lot of great feedback. And honestly, there were so many common denominators that what we have and what we always use. So we just thought we'd, we'd do a video on some of this stuff because there are a lot of new hunters out there. And when we can share it and make their experience even that much better, it's good for all of us. Calls, oh my gosh, there's all kinds. You've got your reeds. And I'll tell you what, really good thing is keep your reeds in a little plastic container when you're done using them. They also have little clips for your hats, but what I like is putting them back in here because if weather changes and everything else, you keep, you keep them all protected and they never fail you. Now, there's a whole lot of different calls. You could go to Slate's. And what's cool here is they actually have a little plastic lid that fits over. So using your strikers, it shows you what to do for your new callers. And I mean, it's real simple to work. You've got all your types of different slates. Now, what I like more than anything is having a, an assortment. That's why they make a lot of pouches in your vests and on your, you know, in your bags, because each call carries a different tone. Sometimes, just like any other type of hunting, even, I mean elk hunting, deer hunting, you're grunting, you're doing all these little things and nothing, and all of a sudden you try this cr another call and boom, they respond. Same thing with turkeys. What I like to do is I always keep all my stuff in Ziploc bags. One, it makes it real easy in my bag to hurry up and grab it. It keeps it protected from all the elements. I've got a crow call. My owl hoot, I pretty much do my on my you know with my own voice in the, you know before sun up I try to you know we'll do some owl hoots try to get to where those gobblers are gobbling and try to intercept them when we know where they're going to fly down and where they're going to go look for those hens different types of strikers now why because again each striker has a different tone so as you start to play with this you'll see it you want to carry chalk emery cloth sandpaper and the reason being on your slate calls on your box calls, you know, you always want to chalk them up and or you want to scratch them. You want to scribe them, you know, with the emery or the sandpaper. This way, when you bring your striker across, it gives you your tones. You know, these, just the calls alone, you can have such an array or an assortment of them, drive you crazy. But here's the big thing, practice with them. Never go in the woods without, in the spring, our thermocells, oh baby. From Florida to Alaska and everything in between, they have one common denominator, mosquitoes. We hate them, they love us, and I think they like me more because, you know, that Italian, that little Italian grease I have in my body, yeah, they like that. What else I try to do is carry extra butanes and pads, and again, everything, I know it sounds crazy, but everything's in Ziploc bags. Now, these bags are a little more durable. You can buy them anywhere, but the big thing is, instead of just using a Ziploc that's cheap and they tear, these last me for years, so I always have them. Sawyers, this is incredible for ticks and chiggers. Spray your clothes once a season. Let them sit up there and dry and you'd be amazed. One of the big things that we've always, and you could watch us for years, we love the Leafy, the 3D Leafy. It breaks that human silhouette up. It breaks the right here on the shoulders, the arms for moving. I still favor my boonie hat. Again, it's the leafy one and it's been through hell. I hunt with this everywhere. Why? Because two of the biggest things that are moving in the woods, your head and your hands. So lightweight gloves, and we always carry like two pair because I'm gonna tell you right now, you will lose a pair chasing birds. You're gonna. So I always have two pair of these and, believe it or not, two pullover face masks. Real simple to use, you keep them on, you just flip them up when the bird's coming in, you cover the head with the camel. The other thing that I like to have is I always carry a little tube of camel makeup. Now this face paint, it's real easy. It just comes in three tubes, you screw them out and you just keep, you take all that glare off your face. Now if you're gonna, if you lose your gloves, Guys, you can put the camo on your hands too. The big thing is the two biggest things that are always moving is your head and your hands. Some of the other things that we highly recommend, that is don't forget your rangefinder because hopefully you're gonna pattern your guns or you know you're, you're you know, even shooting with your bow or your crossbow, you're, good, you're gonna need to know the distances. Now, I'm not saying you get there and you wait till the bird's coming in. Hurry up, sit down, get your location real good, and we'll talk about that shortly. 
we always have our compact vinyls. Why do I mention compact? Well, you know, most of your turkey hunting, you don't need a big set of optics. You need a small set to one, to maybe even glass, see if, see if you could see birds up in trees, up in the roosts, or if you could see them spotting them coming through thick cover, and you're looking. The big thing with everything that we're using with turkey season, okay, is have nothing that has red on it, red or white. Why? Just because, especially if you're hunting public land, you don't want to resemble absolutely anything that looks like a redhead coming in. I told you, I carry a lot of stuff. Pruners, absolutely a necessity. Little folding saw. RJ actually, RJ and Aubrey got me this one for Christmas and I just played with it out in the woods. Look at that. Really simple, lightweight, small, compact. But then again, I mean, we've got our other ones, so they're really nice. They fold out real easy to work. I carry this little pouch. In this pouch, I have a SOG multi-tool. I've got my muddy knife with replaceable blades. I've got a Ziploc bag, little one in here. I've got parachute cord. I've got everything plus the tag. Don't forget your tag. The other thing that I pack, though, is a heavier pair of leather-faced gloves. Why? A lot of times you're gonna have to get quick set up. I do not like shooting with heavy gloves on. But when I'm gonna start breaking, you know, cutting branches or grabbing thorns and all that, you want some type of glove that stops that stuff from penetrating your skin. And just carrying a lightweight, heavy, you know, leather-faced glove is a big plus. A couple other important things. I carry a headlamp with extra batteries. This is my Cyclops light. It has the green bulbs and it has the regular white bulbs, which are really nice. You know, so the big thing is, is I've always got it. It's in a Ziploc bag. If everything gets wet, I know this is always protected. I carry a little rechargeable fl flashlight. This little sucker is bright. <laughs> so the big thing with this though is real nice. If you, if you, you know, you're just getting in, whether, and you, a lot of times if we're hunting out west or you're hunting down south in a ground blind, don't get in that blind without checking first for any snakes or critters that you really don't want to be in there. And when I go to sit on the ground before sunup, you know what I mean? I want to scan the area. Because if I don't have my headlamp on and I went in pretty quiet and, you know, with no lights at all, and then all of a sudden I want to check. So always use, you know, a flashlight or your headlamp to check the surrounding areas. Listen, we don't like snakes. Keep them away by using your light. A little thing that we really fell in love with a couple years ago, fan lock. Yep. You know, we don't mount a lot of the birds anymore. What we do though, is we do like to keep the fans. So what you do is you spread it out, peel all the, as much flesh off as you can, spray fan lock on, let it dry. And you'd be amazed at how long it preserves your fan. And you put them up on the walls, you put them on decoration. But the cool thing is, is you got another trophy mount. Real inexpensive. Now I'm going to turn around and show you a couple things. You see that we've got our Elps bag. That bag right there, I fell in love with when they first introduced it. Why? It's small. It holds everything we need, and then some. And it's just a shoulder strap, and you just throw it on, you run and gun, and it's just amazing. The cool thing with it is small, it's lightweight. We still have our turkey vests. We still use backpacks. But most of the time, when we know where we're hunting, where we're not traveling in far, you know what I mean, and it's a close location to where we, you know, we, we, we leave the buggy from, I'm running with that pack. You know, having some type of steady rest. You know, whether it's the Cabela's, the three leg, or the two leg, you know, the big thing is, is you wanna be able to pivot. You know what I mean? Move on those birds. When those birds start talking to you and you know the direction they're coming in, just shift your body, shift your sticks, and get ready in that location so there is no extra movement as that bird approaches, because you know he's gonna be coming up and he's gonna be looking hard, and he's gonna be turning, looking at that eye, looking at you like that, trying to see any type of movement. That's why camouflage, that's why being still, you know, that's why covering your hands and your face is so critical. And don't be ashamed, grab, the, grab your sticks and camouflage them. Something about turkey hunting is full camel. We love it. And when you start playing with all your gear, the next thing you know you realize, you're camel and everything and I mean everything.
If you're hunting a new area, you know, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll pack a couple of our Force Pros. And the reason I do this, they're set on video. And if we're going through an area, especially after the morning hunt's done and you're scouting and you, you know, you've got a bunch of area that you want to try to cover, boy, we'll take a couple of those out of our pack and we'll put them up. We'll find strutting zones. We'll find, why are all these feathers here? You know, what's going on? Trail cameras will definitely help you to become more successful in the field, not only for turkeys, but everything else. You know, we sure went through a whole bunch of stuff in a quick way, but the matter, the matter of fact is we want you to be better in the field. We want you to have a, you know, a much more enjoyable hunt. And it doesn't necessarily mean tagging a bird. It means being out there with the ones you love and, you know, taking out new hunters and experiencing it and being out in the woods or the mountains in the morning, watching that sunrise or watching that sunset, experiencing what God gave us to be stewards over. Turkey hunting's a blast. I hope this helps you.